So this is a reconvening of the open session of the one of select board at 712 on the September 7th, recorded a meeting, Zoom virtual roll call votes and select board members present, Gary Cheeseman. Peter Clay. Diane, you muted. <laughs> yes, but I said my name. <laughs> Diane Bucco's here, sorry. All right. So we have a full board quorum. Also, uh, Catherine Tinsley as recording secretary and town administrator, Steve Poulos. To start off tonight, it's with sadness that I report the passing of Barbara Locke on 1 September, a longtime community uh, supporter. She had been the president of the Wenham Village Improvement Society. She was a strong advocate for WVI's uh, Wenham Tea House, well known and in fact uh, was instrumental in acquiring the uh, first liquor license in town for the Wenham Tea House. And that certainly has uh, assisted in the uh, continuing success of that uh, important institution in uh, Wenham. Barbara served on the uh, many town committees. She was on the uh, 375th anniversary committee on the Adeline Cole Memorial Committee and has served on the historic district commission since 2011 and on the Community Preservation Committee since 2014. So the uh, Town of Wenham expresses its uh, condolences to Barbara's family and uh, with sympathy. She'll be missed. On to the rest of the uh, agenda then. So our first uh, step as usual is the uh, public input. And if you had uh, raise your hand to uh, see. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Patrick Waddell. Yes, all right, I see now. So uh, as our public input is, uh, so if you would uh, please uh, identify yourself, give us your address and uh, give us two minutes on a matter not being addressed this evening. Thank you, Patrick, go ahead. Thank you, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would like uh, Patrick Waddell, Five Great Pond Road. Uh, I would like to address a situation that has come up very recently. Uh, on August 9th, uh, our town clerk, Trudy Reed, made a presentation to the select board. And it was a request to adjust the clerk's salary from $37.90 to $43. $43 is mid-range for towns of our, our size and, and this area. Uh, it's reasonable. There's been a great increase in duties, uh, which was noted, and I'm sure Diane, you could speak to as well, because you obviously had the same increase in duties or, or very similar. And Trudy is a very experienced town hall employee. She's been uh, in the clerk position for 12 years. Um, Wenham is typically at the low end of the pay scale. That's unsustainable, and we know it, and we've known it for a very long time. Uh, again, the request was reasonable. It was for an increase of $9,700. Um, I believe the select board committed an unforced error. We lost a very valued employee. She is moving on. Uh, and we lost her because of a lack of support by the select board. The, her experience is very valued by our community. And I, I wrote in the chat at that time, let the voters decide. Let Trudy make a presentation to town meeting to make her case for why, why she believes the position should be compensated at $43 an hour. You denied that. Um, and now we're gonna have an opening and we're gonna need an interim town clerk. Uh, it's costly. And then we're gonna have to elect another town clerk. They're hard to find. They're, 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 not, they're just not out there. Um, and how much will inexperience cost us, the citizenry, to get a new person in place? I heard the arguments that, that the process is important, but you can't ignore reality. And the reality is turnover is expensive. Mm -hmm. we, had, we had a, a, a very strong employee and we lost her. This is not a surprise. The town government study committee came to the select board early in our process and asked to expand the scope of our study to include the town clerk position to determine whether 
it would be best that one would be best served by an appointed or an elected official. The select board denied that request. You were, you were forbid us to delve into the subject. And I, I still think we need to, as a town, uh, we need to look at this position. It's changed. We can't just go right. get any candidate. Well, thank off. you, Patrick. I see that your time is up here. And uh, thank you for your inputs. And uh, the uh, select board has addressed the uh, resignation of the uh, current town and clerk is uh, certainly on her own decision. So we'll move forward as necessary. We've lost others before and we'll find suitable and qualified replacements. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Is there any other uh, public comments to be made? I see no hands. All right, then uh, let's move forward then. And uh, I'll turn it over to Steve to uh, go through the uh, announcements, which we have many. and some with very close in uh, dates to pay attention to. So <clears throat> this one is a reoccurring theme throughout the summer, although it's rained the past two days, but the uh, water ban is still in effect. I know we're you know great getting close to the end of the watering season, but uh, just is just to um, remind folks that it is still in effect and they are still enforcing it. And again, you know, um, lots of opportunities out there to get involved in your local government. Feel free to reach out, uh, you know, to the select board's office. I'd be happy to fill you in or put you in contact with the chair of the committee or, you know, if, if there's anything it looks like you're interested in getting involved in. And uh, this is uh, REITs across the map. Uh, Reads, reads across America. So on Saturday, December 17th, 2022 at 12 p.m., the town of Wenham will lay wreaths on our veterans' graves um, simultaneously with, with participants at the Arlington National Cemetery and other communities across the nation. Uh, so this is an opportunity to, um, you know, purchase a, a wreath uh, and make a contribution to uh, all our veterans. And uh, Hamilton Wenham's Children's Children's <clears throat> Business Fair on September 24th from 11 to 4 p.m. The second annual Hamilton Wenham's Children's Business Fair will host 50 young entrepreneurs ages 8 through 18 on the front lawn of the Wenham Museum. This event is free and open to the public. And yeah, young vendors uh, can apply from anywhere in the region. So we have... Um, contact information and uh, additional information on that uh, if you want to visit the website uh, at wenamuseum.org. And this is, uh, this is, this is tomorrow night. Uh, we've been putting out on social media and uh, we have a, a number of uh, news, news uh, blurbs go out there uh, trying to get the word out that this is uh, uh, there's a lot of questions that since my three three months of being here, I've got a lot of questions of where this project is at through 1A uh, redevelopment, which is right out in front of um, Town Hall here. And so this is Mass Dots uh, first. Well, they're they're required public hearing. It's a, it's a uh, it'll be held tomorrow night at so that's Thursday, September 8th at 6:30 via Zoom. Um, and it, it is essentially a mass DOT meeting, but there will be panelists from the town that will uh, be able to address any questions. So if you have any questions, concerns, comments, like this is this is the time to come out. They're going to have overlay maps uh, and things like that to really be able to um, help you visualize what the project entails. And if you do miss it, we do currently have a, uh, if you just go to the Wenham uh, the Wenham Home website, right at the top left, you'll see uh, Route 1A. There's a new tab that we added in there. We have all the information in the slideshow that they'll be pre presenting tomorrow night. So again, come on out and express uh, concerns, questions. And this is something now uh, that they will be holding at the fire department. It's a September 11th remembrance. The fire department uh, is uh, would like to invite everyone to attend um, 
this. It's going to be held on uh, September 9th at 9.30, and coffee and light refreshments will be served. Very well. Amongst those announcements, certainly 9-11 uh, remembrance is important, but also as a practical matter, you know, everybody on this uh, website tonight, I hope you uh, notify others within the town to make sure they show up for the mass DOT public hearing. This is really the public's uh, one shot at uh, providing uh, comments to the project. Very well, town administrators report then. Yep. Um, so we we're having our comp and class study. So this is a study that uh, will review the internal equity of the pay structure here in town and also benchmark all our positions to comparable communities uh, across the uh, state of Massachusetts. Um, things that we deem to be comparable are things like po population, location, budget size, government form, form of government, um, per capita income, things like that. And we come up with a, uh, you know, roughly top 15 to top 20 communities. And we will be able to benchmark our compensation structure against them to see where we are in the market. So it ties in uh, to Mr. Wood Waddell's comment. We are addressing um, his concerns and uh, you know trying trying to remedy any anything if you know if the study comes back indicating that we're low we have uh you know and then that 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 kicks off that kicked off um on thursday of last week we have our we're having serving lunch for all the individuals whose um whose position is getting reviewed uh next wednesday and there will be an, uh, an info session uh, done by the GovHR, who is the consultant that will be doing the study and try to afford folks the extra time needed to make sure they get their questionnaires done and be able to really spend some time thinking through what their role is and you know, what they contribute on a daily basis so we can make sure we can capture uh, all the great work that everybody does. And we this morning we had a uh, we had a productive discussion with Pulte Homes. We had an all department head and chairs meeting. So all uh, chairs of boards and committees and the, that were able to attend and the department heads uh, just was discussing the potential development over at the Gordon College property. So I thought there was a productive question, some good questions raised. So that process is continuing to move forward as uh, Pulte Homes is kind of in their uh, data collection stage of, of gathering any concerns and um uh of of the the residents and boards and committees in the town to as they as they move forward in their process the special town meeting warrant book when it went out uh well it went to the printer last week we anticipate it be in the mail um probably next week so folks can expect to get their copy of the special town meeting warrant which will be on october 1st uh, expect to get that probably about a week and a week and a half in advance of the special town meeting and uh, we I had given an update last week that we were um, advertising for the assistant town administrator position which will serve in uh, uh, several different capacities uh, some of which were previously held by Jackie Bresnahan and we had um, four finalists that we would look down to that we were going to uh, interview them on Monday one dropped out so we now have three so this Monday will be uh, the first round of interviews and the interview panel will uh, come back to me with two finalists of which uh, I'll interview them myself and a selection will be made uh, in collaboration with the select board. And that's all I have for updates today. All right, thank you, Steve. So uh, chairman's update. So yes, the... Um... The Pulte Homes project off Grapevine, I'm not sure we have an exact name for it yet, but uh, certainly for the public, um, clearly this is going to be a major effort, will be the largest increase uh, in town population and resources, and uh, but uh, it, it's going to be a very deliberate process. We're expecting many months to uh, go through the permitting phase as both Pulte Homes and uh, Gordon College and the town uh, 
looks at all the possible issues and conditions that are included in that. And uh, that will be uh, fronted mostly by uh, our good town administrator. And of course, the uh, planning board has the lead on this. As always, looking for uh, volunteers to uh, assist in uh, town hall. I'll just put that out. There's uh, plenty of uh, items to be cleaned up in the basement or assist around as well. And we'll see some other options on that later on in the agenda here. Uh, we're making progress on the uh, ensuring the town hall is ready for in-person meetings. So we're getting the help the filters in. And I think Steve can update us that uh, hopefully at the next uh, select board meeting or the one thereafter, we'll make the final decision and move to open hybrid meetings. Does that sound like a good schedule, Steve? Yes, I think that's a good schedule. I think by next by the next meeting, we should be uh, just, just about ready to make that announcement. All right, sounds good. Uh, just one more plug to attend the public hearing on the Route 1A project tomorrow night. And one other uh, event coming up is the uh, Veterans Coffee is at the Council on Aging uh, at the 10 o'clock on the uh, next 13th. So if uh, you know any neighbors that are veterans, uh, invite them to attend that uh, coffee. I'd like to see some new people uh, attend those events. So over to uh, Diane next then as the vice, uh, what uh, is on your agenda? Well, I think I'll plug the same thing one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow night at 6.30, but for Route 1A, um, the 911 ceremony at the fire station on the 9th, that's Friday the 9th at 9.30, uh, are good things to attend um, in this next week. So that's all I have. All right. Thank you, and Peter. I would just say ditto to Diane. All right, thank you then. Then let's uh, move on to the consent agenda, Peter. Move to approve the Wenham Select Board meeting minutes of July 29th, 2022. Any, uh, all right, second, any comments? If not, Roll call vote, Peter? Yes. Diane? Yes. Gary, yes. All right, then uh, as we move forward, the uh, one day liquor license for uh, First Church in Wenham. Uh, Steve, you wanna to speak to us or do we have anybody online here? Um, I do not believe we have anybody online. Right. Yeah, so this is a, a one day liquor one day liquor license. Uh, all application is in in good order, and they fulfill all the uh, requirements that the select board has set forth. All right, thank you. Any questions, comments? Otherwise, the motion, Diane. I move that the one select board approve a one day liquor license, all alcohol, for the collation for Bill Nelson at the First Church of Wenham on September twenty fifth, twenty twenty two. Peter Clyde seconds. Any further comments? Otherwise, roll call vote, Peter? Yes. Diane? Yes. Gary, yes. New business B. So uh, do we have Rich Souser on or Steve, you wanna just give us a quick overview of this for the uh, public? I believe Rich, Rich is here, he can. Uh... Right. Welcome Rich. Oh, can, can you hear me? Yes, Rich. Mm -hmm. So okay. uh, give us just a one minute uh, overview on this uh, contract. So this is the the milling contract uh, for our, our paving uh, activities. So, um, you know, when, when streets are um, milled down, you know, a certain depth, and then there's a separate contract for the actual paving. But so that's that's all this is is just milling activities. Right. Questions, Diane or Peter? No. Nope. All right. Then uh, Diane, the motion, please. So I move that the Wenham Select Board approve the Tread Milling Company Incorporated contract for roadway milling services through June thirtieth, twenty twenty three. Peter Clay seconds. Further comment? None. Then roll call vote. Peter. Yes. Diane. Yes. Gary, yes. Sure. 
So item C, uh, proposed uh, budget memo from the uh, town administrator to uh, department heads and all boards, committees, and commissions to uh, kick off the FY24 budget season. Uh, the draft memo is was in the packet. And uh, is it able to bring that up on screen, Steve? Yep, I can do that. All right. There, I should be able to see it now. Looks good. So, uh, questions, comments from uh, Diane or Peter? I have none. Me neither. All right. So, uh, highlights uh, in one sense, business as usual, but uh, note that uh, we'll, uh, after interruptions the last couple of years with pandemic and changeover, we will uh, move forward with a uh, longer term five year capital planning process this year, adding that in. All right, so. Um, That's a huge step forward. It is. And um, we'll uh, work on that. And uh, with the, the able assistance of Jamie and uh, Steve, we'll get that in place this year. All right, so uh, motion please from Diane to uh, oh. accept this uh, memorandum. We have to accept the memorandum. Well, yes, uh, I think the uh, select board uh, approve it. To Approves go out. it. Okay. And I would make one other comment that this year too, that uh, we are directing this to all boards, committees, and commissions as well to make sure they're included in the uh, initial compilation of the uh, budget uh, submissions. I see it's also to the school district staff. That, that is, well, that is to... Uh, you know, notify them that we are into the budget season and starting ours off. And as we'll see uh, shortly here, we're already coordinating the uh, joint schedule of meetings with them. Right, and, but I, I think the school, incorporating the school district in this memo kind of gives them the heads up of how we're looking at the budget <clears throat> from our town perspective. And, and I think that's a great idea. I'm not sure if we've done that before. Sounds so, good. Um, I move that the Wyndham Select Board accept or approve the fiscal year operating and capital budget memo dated September 1st, 2022. Peter Clay seconds. Anything further? Otherwise, uh, vote, Peter? Yes. Diane? Yes. Gary, yes. Thank you. And uh, that's to Steve to uh, process out. Thank you. So the next slide, and I can just bring it up here, is the, uh, I believe we're, we go into, I believe the next slide is a joint session. Is that correct? Yes, Michelle? that is correct. So I commence so, joint uh, session with FinCom for the next two sub items. So we have a FinCom chair on board. If you'd like to call your group to order. I will, thank you very much. Um, I don't see who's, I don't have on my screen, I can't see who is here. So right. uh, uh, David Reed is not joining us tonight. <clears throat> uh, is uh, Scott Schoenberger? Here. Susan Malin? Here. Uh, and who do we, who am I is leaving out here? Deidre Parati. <laughs> I'm sorry, Deidre. <laughs> uh, 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 hello. Hello, uh, FinCom. And Jim Purdy as chair. All right, so we have a quorum and you're kicking off at 7.37 p.m. for the record for Thank Catherine. You. Yep. All right, so Thank uh, you. first item on the uh, joint session here is a discussion of the budget cycle. I know Steve has uh, been coordinating and uh, looking at uh, starting with our annual town meetings for next April 1st 
and uh, filling in uh, dates, sort of uh, backing up from that to give us time to get all the administrative work done. So Steve, can you pull up that um, proposed schedule? Oh. Can you make that a little bit bigger, Steve? Yes. Yep. Thank you. Is that better? It's better. For, it's it's fine. Okay. Thanks. I can I can see it. Yep. Full screen. Yep. So you you um, want to talk through it quick, Steve? Yeah, sure. Yeah, so right. So Gary's right. We started, um, you know, April first town meeting. Kind of work back backwards with our deadlines as far as getting to the printer and what needs to be done before a certain time to meet um, our statutory our obligations. So basically, that led us to starting the process by sending out the the budget letter and guidelines that was just approved by the select board on Thursday, September fifteenth, which is next week. I've coordinated with the um, with the uh, school school district and Hamilton to get dates on their schedules uh, for. I believe we're going to do two large group meetings this year. And in, uh, in prior years, there's only been one. From what I've told, there's always been um, a desire to have a second a second large group meeting. In addition, I think we're tentatively scheduling three uh, chair meetings. So it'll be the Hamilton Select Board Chair, uh, FinCom Hamilton and Wenham Select Board Chairs, uh, FinCom Chairs from both both, both FinComs, and um, also the uh, Hamilton Wenham School District Board Chair. So three three meetings tentatively um, set like that. Uh, really, the key dates for the budget process is. Um, <clears throat> for uh, internally for, for town uh, related departments is so it would be uh, on Tuesday we're going to send it well we'll send out the the information the departments will be getting their packets we want to um, you know we, we want to be able to distribute the packet information uh, by December 2nd so and prior to that, on just on uh, Tuesday, November fifteenth, we're looking to have a joint select board and FinCom meeting, and there'll be a, a financial overview presentation of all, you know, our current budget to actuals, uh, revenue estimates, what the last few years looked like, what we're anticipating, things that are going to happen moving forward, uh, things like that. As we, you know, as as the departments are compiling their their budget numbers, and then. On Friday, December twenty, December second, uh, we'll be issuing the operating budget books to the select board and the finance committee, and then on Saturday for their review. And then on Saturday, December tenth, will be an all-day affair where we'll be reviewing um, department by department all their requests. We're looking at maybe doing coming up with a template three three to five slides per department and any board or. Uh, committee, as Gary mentioned before, we're expanding the request out to the boards and committees, trying to get folks to be thinking ahead on um, financial needs that they may have in the coming fiscal year, instead of uh, you know kind of asking for the money in the budget year when we haven't been able to plan for it. And it comes by way of uh, other sources. Looking to build a little planning into it, and then from there you can see we've allowed for. Uh, you know, a minimum of uh, four FinCom uh, budget deliberations, and then be looking for a final recommendation vote from the FinCom on February 1st. So then the select board can put make their final vote on that the following week on February 7th. And then that gives us two weeks by us staff to finalize all the packets and the information and get the warrant book completed and the budget kind of interwoven and capital plan interwoven into the uh, warrant articles and off to print on February 21st, which is five weeks before town meeting. And that's about what they what the printer is estimating right now if we're gonna get uh, the warrant hearing booklets in residents' hands um, two weeks or so in advance of town meeting.
Has this been sent out, Steve, by the way? I haven't. I, this is the first time I've seen it. Have you sent this along? No, it's just something, we, something we've been working on. And I wanted okay. to share it here tonight. So, you know, get any feedback. Okay. Yeah. I'd like to review it with the uh, finance committee at our 21st meeting, but it looks reasonable. It looks like, you know, uh, you're hitting the highlights of all the uh, meetings that do need to occur. Yeah. A couple of the points that we need to remember is that uh, the printers have told us that, you know, the uh, you know, time lag to get the uh, printing done, there's less printers out there. They have uh, their own supply chain and uh, personnel issues. So that I think uh, we probably need that five weeks in there for sure to uh, get the uh, printing process done, which uh, drives the uh, final uh, FinCom and select board vote uh, dates. So yeah, so uh, Jim, if you'll, uh, you're meeting on the 21st. So- uh, Meeting on, yeah. Yeah, yep. so any yep. comments on that? I think, uh, you know, it's important to see that uh, we are really um, getting good interactions with the uh, school board in Hamilton on the uh, joint uh, facilities and so forth too, as you know, we've added a couple of more uh, joint operations so that uh, we really need to tie the two towns together as far as budget schedule wise. All right, any other questions from anybody on uh, this uh, schedule? Steve, uh, can you send that out to the uh, uh, finance committee members or can Jamie send that out to us? Yeah, yeah, I can that up tomorrow. Oh. Jamie, sure. yeah. And and <laughs> Jamie, I got uh, Jamie, I got the agenda. I've been away all day. I, I hadn't had a chance to look at my emails at all. Uh, I got the agenda, so uh, it looked fine. But could we add this, Jamie, to the uh, agenda for the twenty first? Yes, we can. Um, and then I'm gonna send everyone a packet with everything by the end of this week, so you have a week to review before the meeting. Oh, good. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, so uh, second uh, item on the uh, joint session is uh, finance committee uh, questions on our ARPA plans. Right, could, could, I, could I interject here, uh, Gary? Yeah, sure. Oh, okay, thank you. Oh. So uh, yes, uh, <clears throat> we had questions about the whole ARPA process and, and uh, what, uh, what the, uh, priorities are and so on. And this came up, I think, I think the discussion that we really did want to have with the uh, selectmen tonight, which I think is very important, <clears throat> is our deferred action on Article 3. Um, uh, the five years I've been on the finance, we've never deferred a recommendation uh, to the town meeting. So I think it's, uh, <clears throat> it's important for us as, as two groups uh, to, have this, uh, to have this discussion. Um, by the way, uh, the FinCom very much recognizes the importance of this article uh, to the design phase process, to the entire process of moving this forward with the uh, School Building Assistance Fund. We are clearly aware uh, that the support of this is critical to the 47% uh, reimbursement by the state. But what, what, what's happened uh, that led us to deferring the action. I just like would just like to outline that. Uh, one, of, one of it is a, a, a timing of how this material got to uh, the finance committee. So on <clears throat> the week of August 22nd, uh, we heard uh, for the first time that Tuesday uh, of the debt exclusion strategy and the full amount of 346,000 out of the million dollars uh, was our share. Uh, we hadn't had that information before uh, August 22nd. Now, Gary was good enough to email me, which I distributed to the FinCom, the reasons why, uh, I think it was from you, Gary, I'm not sure if it's from the select board, why ARPA, uh, why ARPA was not appropriate uh, to be used uh, for uh, that debt exclusion or for uh, funding that 346,000 uh, amount for the uh, phase, the design phase of the process. 
So as we talk, as we talked about it, the on the, uh, then the other then the other <laughs> crunch time in this was uh, the request for the FinCom have. We have never seen the articles. We hadn't had a chance to read the articles until Thursday before the request for us to meet on August 26, Friday, which we did. We met at 10 o'clock in the morning. And it was the first time, it was the first time the uh, Finance Committee had the opportunity to really discuss the debt exclusion, the amount, and to take a look at the articles. And we went through, Steve was, uh, and Jamie were there. We went through the articles. Uh, we made some recommendations on the, on our, particularly on Article 3, by the way, of some more specificity around the amounts. And Steve, I know, was going to work on this uh, in the terms of an addendum. But as we talked about Article 3, I, I, uh, it, it left us with some, some observations and some questions still that we could not decide at that meeting to make a recommendation. We did make a recommendation, by the way, on Article, article 1. Uh, we deferred our Article 2 because there was no funding attached to it. And we also did have some questions about that with, that um, it was kind of difficult to get, get, get some answers because it was school budget, uh, school committee process. But article three was the sticking point for us. And I think it's important for us to let you know that and that we've deferred action on that. And we'll hopefully be making a decision on that at, um, at the separate, uh, September 21 meeting. But just let me go over with you some of the questions uh, that the Finance Committee uh, has at this point. Um, first, we're, I guess we are being asked to make a decision about ARPA. Uh, essentially, you know, we're not using ARPA for this, but we're using it for X, Y, and Z. And Steve did go through uh, kind of informally without a list, but he went through a number of the areas but it left the uh, finance committee with trying to make a, a decision on only, only having half of the information about ARPA. And I know uh, that uh, the, the uh, select board is having a public meeting, I think next, next week, I believe, on ARPA for, for, for input. But it left the uh, finance committee asking a question about ARPA use uh, and specifically the use of this 346,000. One of the things that Gary did uh, discuss was uh, the issue that our use of ARPA funds would somehow mask the true cost of, of this, uh, this entire project. And, you know, we, we, as we talked about this, and um, we felt that, you know, there's going to be many, many opportunities in the next year, two years, to discuss the full cost of this project. And in fact, talking about the ARPA funds uh, openly, that's an open discussion. It doesn't mask it. We're using those, those dollars for the project. So we felt that that, you know, if we're gonna, if we're gonna use ARPA for, I don't know, the Iron Rail, for example, should that have be an open discussion with, with town meeting, uh, which is a, a big piece. Um, the final, the, 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 big, the biggest question is, so we have available to us this one, I think it's, if I'm correct, I, I think it's $1,225,000. And I know some of that's been committed for the water department. And we are all in agreement on that up front. Uh, but why at this point do we want to go into a debt exclusion of $346,000 um, increase the tax rate, uh, the interest rates are going up on, the, on, of course, on borrowing. And wouldn't it be good to use the ARPA money, this one-time opportunity of the 346 to fund the design phase? But we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to bond a significant amount of money in the future, that is, that is for sure. So th these are some of the, you know, kind of overall questions. And it's been hard for us to make a, a decision, an informed decision from our view, uh, because of crunch of the time frame. And as we discussed it, we just we, we ended up not being able to make a, a recommendation at this point. So uh, that's that's kind of where we are. I think it's important to let you know that. Uh, I don't know if you had a chance to view the meeting or not. If you did, you <laughs> I'm repeating myself. Um, so 
I don't know if other committee members have any comments uh, on what I've said. I've tried to summarize uh, as best as I can what our overall uh, questions were and, and discussions. Any other questions from the committee members, please? Comments? Um, I have a comment. I, I, first of all, thank you, Jim. It was well-versed and, and I think very accurate as to what happened. And I, I see no reason to go to a debt exclusion for this particular item when we have fully half of the money or maybe we have all the money in, in the bank now from the opera funds to simply write a check and not burden the taxpayers any further than we're already burdened. Um, I, I think that that's critical. And and to say you don't you you don't want to mask the cost of something. People people aren't aren't naive. They, they'll be able to roll all of this in. The numbers will be rolled all in we'll know how much it's going to cost it's just an additional burden on the taxpayers and i looked at the list of things that are on your suggestions um, to spend arpa on and frankly most of them pale um, to the significance of of this and this is money the town can write a check for it's money for the schools, it's money for the kids, it's a kickoff, and I think we should just do it. Thank you, Susan. Any other comments from uh, any other FinCom members? Okay, uh, Gary, uh, that's our yeah. that's our questions right. and so. Very well, so um, I'd open up to uh, Peter first and then Diane, any uh, comments? I have no comments. Diane? Neither do I. Right. So I would say, you know, the, um, as you see later tonight, we have uh, many uh, identified items that uh, the ARPA funding could be uh, going for. My concerns are that uh, for many years with the, uh, demands of overrides and so forth, that a lot of stuff has been put off as far as uh, town needs and requirements. That the ARPA funds, you know, provide a one-time opportunity to catch up on some of those things, whether it is plussing up the uh, trust funds or free cash or doing uh, maintenance work or uh, providing items to uh, the different departments that have been identified that uh, we'll see later on the list. You know, this uh, process started back on, I think, 8 July was when the uh, superintendent of the school committee came to the uh, select board and presented the, the position on this. So we'll welcome uh, your, uh, your recommendation. I, I assume coming out of the uh, 21st uh, meeting here prior to the, uh, the uh, special town meeting. But uh, I think the ARPA will discuss tonight and identify that, yes, the, the the school is important, but the school expenses should be in the school budget and school thing, and it should not be reaching across to uh, town money. So Congress has identified this to be uh, spent and distributed on infrastructure projects and other uh, categories by the executive uh, group in the particular municipality. And I think that's the way we've got it set up. We're gonna have initial discussion tonight They'll go out to a public uh, survey to get the public input, and we'll start to identify uh, priority items. The uh, you know the the uh, the schools you know have uh, their expenses, and we know that there, there's others out there as well, including the uh, turf field project and uh, the building committee, as well as uh, questions about uh, where the renovations for a Buker school money is coming from. So. I think uh, that's our tendency here is to, uh, you know, focus the ARPA money on town projects and then school projects should come under school committee uh, projects. So 
I May know, I just say something? Here. Yes. Um, the, the schools are the town, Gary. The kids are the citizens. And I don't understand how you can say, put it towards iron rail. You have this list of, I don't know how many, over a million dollars for the iron rail when that is somewhat of an albatross. Nobody knows what's going to become of it. And you have children right now who need some help. And we have money sitting in the bank. So instead of hitting the taxpayers, just hit ARPA. That is a fine use for it. And I, hopefully people will rally around this. Um, hey, Gary, can I, can I just say something? Sure. So uh, I very much appreciate your passion and I, I agree with so much of what you say. Why don't you just wait until we have our discussion on ARPA later in this meeting? Okay. Yeah, because you know, certainly you know, the uh, proposals total some $5 million. <laughs> so there's gonna be a lot of cuts on that list and there's not a million dollars dedicated to iron rail or anything else right now. So, all right. Absolutely. Anyone else? Just, just, just to clarify, Gary, what you said about the town town money versus school budget money. Um, the debt exclusion is, is town money. Well, yeah, it's, it's all town money it comes out of the same taxpayers, but you know, the- uh, It's not know, the school budget that's paying, paying for this upfront money. Right. For the design it, phase, that 1 million. That's right, but right? It, is that school, it is a school responsibility. Well, it's a, it's a, mutual, it's a, mutual, it's, it's a, it's a mutual responsibility right. Right. between the schools, schools and and the town government, but the debt exclusion in and of itself is certainly town dollars, town resources. Right. But I'd be interested uh, going back to Peter's statement. I, I'd be interested. I have an old, by the way, I, I haven't seen the list, Gary. I have an old memo that I dug out. Uh, from Mr. Ferrara, September 8th, 2021. I don't know if, if that list is close to what you have now, or is it uh, so outdated it should be uh, uh, should thrown away? Really outdated, and uh, we have the full list uh, tonight, and uh, we'll be proceeding to that under, um, what, item? Uh, That's the next item. I, I think, you know, coming up here pretty quick. All right, so we hear it. We'll... Uh, We'll talk about uh, ARPA spending tonight and we'll look forward to your uh, uh, recommendations on the 21st. Does, uh, thank, you, the thank, you for, thank you for hearing uh, our position. All right, thank you. So do you want to uh, close out your uh, session then? Well, uh, I don't have the agenda in front of me. So yes, that's, that's, our, that's our portion, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. But the ARPA is the next, the next piece on the agenda for the select board. Is that yeah, we correct? got a couple of administrative things, and then we'll okay. uh, ARPA is G. Okay, very good. Uh, do I hear uh, a motion of the finance committee to adjourn uh, this uh, meeting on uh, September seventh? That's eight p.m. I'll make the motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll second. Thank you, Second. All those in favor? Roll call. Aye, Jim. Aye, Scott. Aye, Susan. Aye, Deirdre. Okay, thank you very much, Fincom. And our next meeting will be on the 21st. And Steve, if you could uh, if you could get us the list of the budget, uh, budget time frame, the budget calendar, and possibly a list of this most recent ARPA proposed ARPA uh, funding list. That would be, uh, that'd be helpful for us as we uh, continue our discussions. I'd appreciate that. Jim, I'm gonna and send Jim one email with the September 21st agenda and all the items. Oh, okay. Does that and, work? Uh, well, yeah, and uh, yeah, if the, uh, if the budget calendar is, yeah, that'd be great. And okay. um, the ARPA piece. And uh, so the, the agenda, by the way, if I just may take a moment, uh, looks great, just add, uh, uh, what we're going to add, not the ARPA discussion, but the uh, budget calendar, the budget, budget calendar. Yeah. Okay. Okay.
Sounds good. Thank, th thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Thank, thank you, Steve. You. Thank, thank you, Select Board, for listening to our position. Thank you. All right, Michelle, on to item E. All right, so I'll take the background on this. Coming out of the last uh, annual town meeting, a discussion with uh, Superintendent Tracy, you know, they have a requirement for uh, student community service hours. And we talked briefly on the uh, opportunities that the towns could provide to have real substantial jobs that would serve the community. So uh, we've gone to uh, some of the department heads, looked around, and tonight we have, as you saw in the packet, a proposed letter from the uh, select board to the high school principal outlining, I think it is seven opportunities for uh, student uh, service in the uh, town of Wenham. So uh, can we flip that letter up first? All right, so uh, first page projects that we identified was uh, to uh, look at the uh, cataloging of old records and sorting into uh, proper files to uh, dispose as you, anybody that has dared to venture into the basement, Bill Wilson has done an enormous job and I know Neil in the, the um, inspection service has been down there working, but certainly there, uh, especially among the select board records, there's a collection of uh, VHS tapes, uh, printed uh, copies and so forth that uh, really need to be assorted and cataloged and then uh, digitally uh, set forth so we can really search them properly and then uh, dispose of the others. Other uh, projects we've looked at is uh, in town hall, but people know we have a, quite a nice collection of artifacts, posters, photographs, uh, artwork and so forth, but that has never been uh, properly cataloged or uh, um, identified as to the origins of those. So uh, I think that was one that we'd offer up to the history department in uh, the high school to see if any of the students like to come down and take a, uh, a chance to uh, digitize and perhaps a research or a reach out to uh, senior members of the community that actually may know the origin or the background on some of those items like the antique voting box or the weights and seals or uh, artwork. Uh, third project, uh, the uh, town conservation coordinator, we're looking to do a, a tree survey. So that's uh, one that uh, we could uh, use help from the uh, students up there. The fourth one is the uh, Council on Aging needs an uh, update on its database using uh, town clerk's records to identify eligible seniors. If we could flip to the fifth page, the, uh, sorry, the next page. The fifth one is to uh, reconfigure the uh, COA building attic. So anybody have been up to the attic there? Probably not, but there's actually uh, quite a bit of space. I think it was originally used way back at some time for uh, sports teams. So there's already shelving and uh, wire cages that we could use for uh, those papers that have identified for disposal, but are just waiting for the uh, clock to run out that we could dispose them. 
The sixth one is uh, organizing, uh, helping a gym work with the uh, large assortment of uh, medical devices and equipment that are in the COA basement. And the seventh one, as uh, we did last year, we're getting a new fence uh, and installed at Main Street uh, Cemetery, but there's always uh, painting projects on the buildings, the fence, or the shed out at uh, Iron Rail that could be used for work. So here's seven projects we'll identify to the high school, see if we can get some volunteers. And of course, we're always open to uh, other boards and committees and we've uh, kind of surveyed the uh, departments already to see what uh, might be viable. So questions, comments, uh, Diane or Peter? So I have a couple things. Um, I think it's a great idea. I think the, the schools will love this. I, um, if you go back to the first page, that first project um, is worrisome to me. Uh, the retention schedule is completely difficult to understand for anybody. The, the amount of paper and stuff that's down in the basement, I would be concerned unless it was very highly supervised for that, that particular program. Um, so I would just be worried about that one. And my second comment was that each of these projects really needs a, a staff member to be on top of. And, and I don't want it to be say Steve or Michelle in the TA's office. So I see conservation, that would be great. The history one, I think would be great. I think uh, Mrs. Page over there would love that one. Um, and the Council on Aging, maybe Jim would be there, but I think it's gonna, it's a lot of work when you get the student volunteers or any volunteers. So I just worry that we might be asking for more than we can handle. Right. Well, there's a couple of uh, retired uh, select board members that might provide some uh, supervision. If we get volunteers there or others, you know, we have, uh, you know, um, some uh, senior tax write-off or veteran yeah. tax write-off that uh, have in the past become at least familiar with this project that could provide uh, supervision. And as you've seen in the first uh, paragraph too, that, you know, you know, in coordination with the high school, you know, we'll abide by, you know, the, uh, all the protections, you know, we're gonna only do this with pairs of students and uh, so forth. And we'll work out the details with the guidance counselor. But uh, yeah, welcome your suggestions. And we know that the first one's probably challenging and probably the least attractive as well, but we'll see. Yeah, well, I think I think it's not too unattractive if yeah. it's in small steps and, and right. supervised well. Yeah. Jim, uh, I'm sorry, I'm Peter. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was talking to Jim. So Peter, any questions, comments? No, I think it looks great. And All hopefully right. we get some high quality uh, high school students. All right. So uh, Diane, you want to make up a quick motion to, uh, to approve the letter? Company? Yeah. So I move that the Wyndham Select Board approve the letter. Uh, dated September 1st. Uh, dated September 1st. Yeah, no, I wanted to say something about that first project. I, right. I, don't, I would almost either take it out or change it, amend it somehow, if that right. would be amenable to you guys before I make the motion. All right. So Peter, you want to drop the first project then? I, I can't actually see it. It's the cataloging <laughs> of uh, records in the basement. Right. All right. So why don't we drop then, drop that one. My concern is just that there's so much stuff down there and right. it's so, it just be a little bit hard for someone to jump in on that. All right. So let's uh, drop the first paragraph. We'll rewrite it and now you can okay. make the motion. With that said, I move that the Wenham Select Board approve the letter dated to the principal of the Hamilton Winter Regional School District dated September 1st in search of or requesting volunteer opportunities from the student body. Clay seconds. Further comments? Otherwise, roll call vote, Peter? Yes. Diane? Yes. Gary, yes. All right. And if I might say, Gary, that's a great, I think that's a great idea, a great use of our, our schools and, and getting some stuff done for the town hall mm -hmm. as well as teaching kids about really good jobs yes all right uh on to item f then is a uh request to the iron rail committee as uh we know we uh, did a uh, on-site uh, visit from the select board to the iron rail committee that uh now we have the prospect of a major development perhaps just down the road so uh this draft letter is a request from the select board to the iron rail committee to essentially uh 
look at what they see as the future of the property and the facilities at Iron Rail. So if Michelle, if we could pull up that letter that was in the packet. So and as we know, we've uh, from our very preliminary discussions with uh, uh, Pulte Group, the uh, project uh, for their development is, you know, probably uh, many months to uh, rest the fiscal year through the permitting phase. So we do have some time here, but uh, certainly we know there was uh, questions through the pandemic era. We've recovered uh, our uh, tenants and we're going ahead fully with that, but we need to look at the other, the rest of the property and what opportunities we have for potential development or lease sale, whatever. So iron rail uh, responsibility, but you know, we just wanted to kick this off formally with a letter from select board to the iron rail commission that says, uh, please uh, put together a plan. So Gary, I have a problem with this. All right. So one of the ARPA projects is actually doing a feasibility study on iron rail. Yes. It should actually be run by um, the planning board. And so I wouldn't do this. Um, right. I would I would get it funded by ARPA. It's not a lot of money, and let the planning planning board run this. Right. Well, the, the issue here is that that would need a change in the bylaw at the next town meeting to change responsibility for the iron rail from the iron rail commission to the planning board. Just to do a feasibility study? Well, yes. I mean, you yes, know, the uh, I think we'll take a look at this, but you know, the iron rail is the responsibility of the iron rail commission as the government structure is set up now. Well, then I would offer that we ask the iron rail commission to ask the planning board to get that ARPA money and do the feasibility study. Okay. Very well. So uh Shall we just defer this letter and as we, uh, or Diane comments? So I was thinking kind of on the same thing and thought that maybe, maybe the Iron Mill Commission could look at their situation in that property and bring us back something before we have to use, before we decide whether we're going to do that feasibility study. I kind of thought it would be a, a, a precursor of what their vision is of that property. Right. So for, for, people who may not be familiar with the area we're talking about. So if you drive into Iron Rail, there's a dirt road on the left-hand side of the Boy Scout building. You walk down there like 40, 50 yards, and there's a trail that goes up to the right and eventually ends up um, almost at the cemetery. And that property is um, actually... Um, from a top topological standpoint is much cleaner than, than what the folks over at Gordon Pewdy are dealing with over at Gordon. And you could put a lot of space back there that nobody will see. And you've got easy access to uh, 128 straight down um, Essex Street. And um, it's just sitting there. It's a, It's the biggest chunk of property the town owns and so i think we need to have a top-notch outfit do that feasibility study and so if we can somehow convince or word it such that um the the iron rail commission um defers to the planning board to do that feasibility study i i think that's probably the single most important thing that this town can actually do. All right. So let's. So, uh, defer, so why ahead, couldn't Daniel. why couldn't we ask the Iron Rail to to put together some of their thoughts before we go in with a feasibility study? I'm fine with that. Right. I just don't think they think at the same level. No, I don't think so, but maybe they'll see that. That's what I'm saying, that they might come up with ideas and we could then say, 
then a feasibility study would be really a good thing to do. Let's see if we get the ARPA money and commission the planning board or a consultant to do whatever needs to be done. Right? I'm fine with that. All right. So, uh, so it gets down to, uh, do we send this letter and say, Iron Rail Commission, please give us your initial ideas, a letter in some format, and then we'll proceed after that to a feasibility study, step two? I'm fine with that. Was that the goal? Was not was that not the goal of the letter? Yeah, the goal of the letter is to get the Iron Rail, you know, to formally notify them after our site survey that we think it's opportune time, giving everything else that's going on, to uh, take a look at the long-term future, both the uh, parcel that uh, Peter describes, which is, sits unused, as well as the uh, main building and the other facilities there. Right. Yeah, I agree. All right. Diane, the only thing that I would say is mm -hmm. I don't want to jerk around the Iron Rail Commission. Right. But we if want we, if we if if we really believe that if the Iron Rail Commission defers to the planning board, um, and the planning board, Margaret and Weeks and crew, me, um, get a top notch um, an out feasibility study done, then that's the way we should go. Other, otherwise, if we send this note to these guys, we're literally saying. Hey, we we know you guys. Um, we're actually going to get a much better um, uh, study from somebody else. So why jerk these guys around? So I guess I don't mean it like that. I want them to 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 know that we've noticed the property. We went over there. We looked at it. We all think that something we could improve the whole area there for a variety of different reasons. Maybe they already know that. I, I don't know. I feel like we should, they, they need to be involved and, and to keep them, I don't know. I don't mean to, to, to irritate them by any means. I wanted to use their knowledge of the property. I'm fine with that. And maybe they can figure out how to get some money to fix that Boy Scout building. All right. So, um... Where we send the letter and then uh, work on the next item to uh, get the study money. What do you think? Yep. Do we need a motion? Yeah, go ahead with the motion then, Diane. All right. So I move that the select point of select board um, request information from the Iron Rail Commission about the property as noted in the letter, dated September 1st, 2022. Five seconds. Anything further? Roll call vote, Peter? Yes. Diane? Yes. Gary, yes. All right. So uh, looking over at the uh, next. So uh, knowing that um, we've got our top priority determination coming up now, next. All right. So. Um, Let me do, uh, start this off. So we uh, have solicited and received many inputs from uh, departments and so forth. Uh, the town administrator first under Ryan started. It. Steve has completed. We have a, uh, a fairly lengthy uh, list of uh, submissions from uh, different groups in town and have come up with a, uh, as we met last, uh, what last, uh, select board meeting that we decided that the three of us would individually tend to rank what we see as priorities amongst the, uh, I think there's what uh, grand total of uh, 60 or so items totaling uh, close to $5 million. So uh, with a 1.4, roughly a remaining after uh, allocating the 100,000 for the uh, important water department uh, generator, this is what we have. So uh, Steve has compiled a, uh, our three uh, rankings and have uh, re-established uh, a, a list here, priority list of uh, the items. Uh, up front, we need to understand that the, uh, the dollar amounts on these were initial rough estimates 
the uh, others have uh, you know request associated with them and that uh, after we kind of hopefully tonight reduce our list down to a, a suitable number maybe 25 or so that uh, gets our part way to the figure that we would put that out to uh, the public survey. So uh, I think the three of us have uh, received this uh, combined list and uh, I will open it up to uh, Peter and Diane, but if I could make one recommendation first, that it looks like the uh, top four, which are uh, Town HEPA, the hybrid meeting equipment so that we can uh, go back to in-person while also allowing citizens to uh, participate remotely. The auditing reporting services, that is tied to the administrative costs of submitting these projects back up the line to the federal government and the laptops and uh, docking stations for uh, the uh, perhaps added uh, assistance here. So, uh, I think it uh, looks like we're in fairly good agreement on the top four. If there's any discussion on any of those, then otherwise let's take a look at uh, Peter and Diane as to any overall comments you want on the ARPA process or to uh, talk about your priorities. And, but I think uh, perhaps at some point we need to uh, narrow the list down make a cutoff mm -hmm. so that uh, we can get a reasonable number, perhaps 25 out onto the uh, survey to the public. Yeah, so I've been working on this for, I don't know what, um, a while. Yes. And um, I started with um, the spreadsheet that Steve sent us that had the 5.3 million in, in requests and we needed to um, get down to 1.2. So I did a lot of pushing. And so I asked Kevin, Stephen, and Rich, you know, to, to prioritize their, um, their projects. I also went to our facilities manager, um, Mike Hardy, and said, hey, HVAC, town hall, um, or... Um, the library and what he said was um, town hall because town hall has no fresh air coming into it it's all radiators it's it's leaky it's moldy so I kind of I kind of pushed at that but I would I would just say that if you look at the fifth item iron rail development study appraisal highest best use analysis 50k just get Margaret Hoffman in charge of that, please, somehow. Um, and we we added planning staff support. Okay, all right. So I have a, a working relationship with Margaret Hoffman. But we do have a lot of stuff coming down. And so um, between Iron Rail, Gordon, um, we, we, need, we need that money. Um, and I... I keep thinking I'm keep trying to scroll down this thing, but I can't do it. Um, public works, drainage culvert repairs. Maybe Rich, if he's, he's yeah. Hey Rich, how about that drain over at Buker that drives all the people crazy that that abut Buker? Um, and then you know, I don't know what else to say, but. Uh, if you go down, please, can you scroll down? Uh, stop. Um, okay, so hazardous pay. This was a good one. Um, my wife was on the uh, library board um, during, throughout this whole process. And I decided that you know, in, in talking about it, that I put that as a 10 for police and fire because they were absolutely um, exposed. Um, and if you read that, uh, uh, the, the wording around the ARPA Act, 
these guys clearly qualify. Whereas when you look at DPW, um, town and library, um, DPW didn't have a lot of, you know, exposure to humans and, um, the town and the library, I mean, they basically shut down and they made it so that you, you were dealing, if you were dealing with a human, you were dealing through a shield. So that's why I put them as sevens. Um, and then if you just go down to the bottom. So I'm, I'm that whack job that, uh, thought, um, where is it? Um, town hall water bottle refilling station. So I gave that a nine because I just, I just want to try and create town hall as a happy place to be. Um, and of course, um, you know, not, not a lot of, uh, support there elsewhere. And then I just, all these trust funds, I just said, no, we can do it later. And by the, yeah, I don't know how much of these, uh, trust funds are, um, also supported by uh, public gifts, but um, I would think like the Iron Rail Cemetery, I, I know I could go to a couple people and get that just covered. Um, and there we are. Those are my comments. Thank you, Diane. Your so, um, so I did it mathematically and picked out my what I thought was the top and um, overspent. And so then I had to cut down from there. So I just did it easier with numbers in my mind. And I gave my top five or six a 10. And then sort of, I gave a lot of zeros. Not that I don't think anything's not important because everything is super important. And I don't want you to think that just in how I would see the town would spend this chunk of money um, in the best way possible. I thought I could try to try to hit as many of the departments as I could. Um, so I kind of did it that way. I just picked my favorites. I tried to make it work in the money, my favorites or what I thought was the most important. Um, but I do want to say that there are a lot of zeros in my column. Nobody else seems to have as many zeros. I just didn't think it was as important to use that money in those respects. Speaking about the COVID pay, the back pay, um, in my world, I just want to move forward from the COVID. So I wasn't thinking that we need to back pay people. That's how I kind of saw it. Um, because I did see, although the town hall weren't exposed during COVID, we were there every day doing our work throughout the entire pandemic. So it, it uh, I don't know if, if everybody's going to get back pay. Maybe, I don't know why. So now I'm rambling because I don't really know. I just feel bad about my zeros. All right, Diane, anything else? Mm -mm. Right. We're not, uh, we're not going to call you a zero. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we got to say that there was no expressed uh, rules on how to insert the numbers. So, uh, right. the method I used was, you know, I used 10 through sixes trying to get. Uh, Two hundred to three hundred thousand dollar chunks, kind of even there. Of course, some numbers didn't work out exactly, but uh, my priorities were that uh, you know we had looked at the uh, fund loss, revenue loss for a bit, and we had always talked about making that up through previous FinCom years to uh, boost a little bit into um, free cash. So I had put that up a little bit. Uh, I think we all agreed with those top four, the uh, direct pandemic costs have to come out of this. Uh, the, um, I had put in for the trust funds and uh, such, uh, principally because I was thinking that, you know, this is a one-time deal that uh, I would like to see these funds have a long lifetime themselves as far as the impact on the town. So I thought that, uh, 
you know, to put some of the trust funds, the money into trust funds that would earn interest and continue this money, uh, especially uh, I put money into a cemetery fund, the tree fund, and uh, the tree fund has been neglected. It's a need that we're going to go forward with climate change. The cemetery trust fund, uh, primarily because, you know, after a decade of low interest rates, the perpetual care does not cover cost, but if we were ever to get that perpetual care fund up, it's uh, an account that we could take from out from under the operating budget. Otherwise, uh, I guess my numbers fall in the middle on the, uh, the pay question, because although we certainly owe a big gratitude and thanks to everyone, the implementation of uh, the pay bonus is quite difficult as to determine exactly who does what or deserves what. So I know a lot of towns have passed on this opportunity, but yeah, I can uh, go forward, especially for the first responders. But I would think that, uh, you know, we really can't, you know, utilize the time to work each individual's contribution down to the penny, but I would be looking for a, just a one-time kind of thank you to the first responders at some, uh, level of funding. Uh, West Wenham Park, uh, I noted on mine that I didn't think would put the full amount of that, recognize that this could be an opportunity for seed money. And I know the, uh, the committee is looking to uh, get uh, private funding raising as well in there. Um, the, um, what else? We talked about the, uh, the uh, trust funds, talked about the, um, the uh, bonus pay. And the last thing I think is that um, we might look, it's a small amount, but again, I put it at 10 that uh, certainly we lost a handful of people that uh, passed away due to COVID and perhaps the uh, town can make some gesture to them, even if it's a, a small amount. So going forward here, I guess uh, what we're looking for is Clearly, if we uh, scroll down to the bottom, you know, we can uh, knock off uh, quite a few items and cut down the overall uh, cost. And I was thinking that, uh, as we've already discussed it, if we look down to uh, the middle here, Steve, around the pandemic pay, that uh, perhaps what, uh, about item 29, if we drop off those top four that we seem to have agreement on, if uh, that would scroll everything up. So other than putting the top four on the kind of approved list, if we can look at perhaps putting the next 25 or so out onto the uh, public survey to see what people think. So that would be everything from the um, facilities that came in at number five down to, uh, old 29, which is the uh, paving projects. Just a question on process. Um, yes. Guys um, and I, would, would we like to have some kind of uh, meetings where Zoom or otherwise, where whatever we end up with, we talk people through what, what we're really talking about. Yes, I think, you know, if we get, do the survey here, and then in the meantime, we need uh, Steve to go back to the departments and say, you know, the top group here, you know, you've kind of made the first cut. Can you define your actual cost or exactly what this is going for, say on the, uh, you know, paving or whatever, that we define each of these projects a little bit more and perhaps uh, squeeze down or better define exactly what the cost is because even at the 25, we're well over the amount of money. So I think as you say, Peter, you know, uh, need a couple of weeks to uh, get that process done. And perhaps the three of us need to invite in a uh, ARPA only review with the uh, remaining candidates here, define what they are and see uh, whether individual items uh, 
may go down or up a little bit in price because obviously, you know, the HVAC 500,000 or loss receipts 300,000. I mean, that's ballpark at the moment. So um, I would propose uh, see if we can uh, make this cutoff tonight, put it out to public survey uh, at our next meeting, take a look at uh, what the public thinks about these, and then perhaps uh, have another meeting thereafter with the uh, actual units here to uh, have a uh, more de defining moment as to what they really uh, propose or what the actual cost on each item is. What do you think about that? I'm good for that. Diane? Hopefully my smoke alarm won't go off again. I'm sorry, I've been jumpy right. over here. Um, that sounds like a great idea. Mm -hmm. All right, Agreed. so uh, Steve, uh, so let's, uh, if we agree, we'll take the uh, top four, say that uh, as those are really within the administration uh, perspective of uh, actual pandemic cost, and uh, maybe at the uh, number 29, so we think that's a good cutoff, which actually will give 25 items. Uh, 30, let's see, 32 will give. Yeah, 20. If you went down to um, the public works, so item 32 in the ranking. Oh, the, the uh, left side. Okay. Over by, by removing the top four, you're then picking the next 25 ranked in priority. Right. Um, and that's still, that gives us what, about a $2 million tab? Yeah, about $2.4 million tab. So right. spend in their remaining dollar amount two times over. Right. So and I know there's folks in the chat, I just want to add the folks in the chat say, well, you know, this project could be, uh, could qualify for CPA funds and things like that. And that's, you know, it's absolutely correct. They may qualify for CPA funds. And the reason why, we, you know, coming out of this and once we get the the uh, the survey done uh, and combined with the select board rankings, we'll get the public's input, the boards and committees input, we'll be able to have a list of the top essentially 25 projects ranked in priority. So as you know, we have the set $1.2 million to spend. And as we're, you know, uh, reviewing the projects and going through different avenues of different funding sources and the, the quotes change, you just, you know, as you, you just move in further down the list as, you know, dollar amounts get smaller or items get removed, you know, those dollars that were we are marked because that was project seven. You can now move to project eight, and then everyone has the input, and it's it's numeric, it's quantitative. There's no there's no argument, and we can certainly look at the other funding sources for uh, some items and clarify, you know, what the options are. So let's, um, Diana, if you can make a motion that uh, can I can I just. Hang on one second, please. Yep. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Deirdre Parad is asking a good question in the uh, chat room. Um, and she says, when will there be a public hearing, not a survey, to hear the citizens' views on how this money is spent? I, I, I think that's what I was saying before. The, uh, so, yes, you know, if uh, we want to go with a public hearing route, we can. But, uh, you know, the, uh, the survey certainly... Uh, has had better participation as opposed to public hearings in the past. So I would uh, favor, you know, if both, if you want, but I think the survey actually uh, gets more participation from the public rather than, you know, the uh, interested uh, few that show up at the hearings. And I would recommend both. I think the survey right. is a good way to get the word out um, to a lot of people and make them start to think about these things and then they might want to talk about it and then if they feel strongly hopefully a good portion will then we could do a public hearing because all right hearing so voices uh, well I, I mm -hmm. think that's great all right so let's uh narrow it down to uh we'll take the uh top 25 other than the uh push the top four through and then the uh take a look at 20 next 25 for this survey get the results back from that and see I suggest there. we we flop and do the um, hearing 
possibly first. Okay. So we can turn it into an informational, like, so we can go through these top 25 projects. We can have the departments who are requesting them, um, you know, give their five minutes on why it's needed. And we can hear residents' um, feedback during the hearing. All right. Uh, you know, and any, any, any expenditure, and then, you know, the takeaway from that meeting will be go to the survey so that people can be educated in these projects take the survey, and then we still end up with the end product of a ranked list to work from. Right. I, I can't agree with that more. All right. So uh, do you think we can uh, do the public hearing on the uh, 20th or the first meeting in October as far as because this is going to have some work from departments to uh, put a slide or two together for each of these? Yeah, I hope. I mean, I can talk to departments tomorrow, but I would think the fourth would be a little bit uh, easier to manage. Yeah, right. I would say after special town meeting, we could yeah. they could prepare a flyer. Yeah. Roger um, allows to leave some stuff there for people to read and be more informed. All right, so uh, some uh, obviously work to do on the town meeting in the interim. So let's uh, tentatively schedule a uh, public hearing in coordination with the uh, select board meeting. It's uh, what, 4th of October, I think. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. That sound good? So we yep. don't need a, a vote or anything. Nope. So. Oh, gosh. I think that's a Jewish holiday, the 4th. Again? Again? I know. All right. I'm just looking so, at my calendar. Uh, I, I haven't checked with my mom, but... Right. um. Yeah, we'll have to look at that anyway. All right, so uh, in October. So Wednesday the fifth is the backup date. Does that the uh, is Isn't it a that holiday? Isn't holiday? That a holiday? See, <laughs> Isn't that Columbus Day or something? Veterans Day. Indigenous people say no. That's the following week. So how about we'll just we'll plan for the, the first select board meeting in October. Right. Yeah, as far as, I'll send an email out. Project. I'll send an email out with the, yeah. with the date. All right. When we know it. We'll talk the schedule later on in the evening. All right. Onward then to item uh, H. We still have a lot of people watching. All right, so um, as we heard earlier tonight, uh, starting the process of uh, looking at preliminary impacts of the potential uh, development out in East Wenham. So uh, as one step, the uh, department heads and a couple of chairs had uh, met with Pulte this morning, heard a little bit more detail as the individual select board members had heard earlier, but uh, putting forward a uh, a request uh, by letter, if we can pull that up, to each of the board's committees and commissions to, uh, at their next meeting, take a look at their initial concerns, ideas, um, impacts that they can de determine as to what the uh, a development as proposed out at uh, Gordon College property would have on their particular area of the town. So if you could uh, flip up that uh, letter, please, Michelle. It's coming just for you. See that? 
Yep. That's legible, Peter. Yep, I read it earlier. All right. Comments, Diane or Peter? Nope. Nope. So as we said, this is going to be a long process, but uh, I think it'd be uh, better if uh, everyone starts uh, working together, getting their ideas together and concerns early on so we can work this through. All right, so a motion then, Diane? October 15th, some, some boards won't, re they might not meet by then. Well, that right? gives uh, everybody uh, five weeks. So I'd hope that okay. uh, if they At don't have one week. schedule, that the importance of this is that they will get together and schedule even if it's just for this one item. Okay. Um, I move that the Wyndham Select Board send the memorandum dated September 6, 2022 to all the Wyndham Boards and Commissions with respect to the major housing development off Grapevine Road. Clay seconds. Further comment? Otherwise, uh, vote, Peter? Yes. Diane? Yes. Gary, yes. All right, that's done. And thank you, as we said in advance from all the committees to start weighing in on this. It's gonna be a major effort across the town. Okay, I think we're down to almost the last item here. Oh, good. Item I is the uh, review and vote on the special town meeting article order of warrant. So uh, that's the lineup, just four articles. Um, any questions, comments? Is that the sequence good? Looks good. Right. Looks, looks good to me. Does the that's moderator because, have anything uh, to say? Because that's how the... Uh, it's already gone through the warrant printing. That oh, way. never mind. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I move that the Wyndham Select Board vote on the special town meeting article order for the warrant. Clay seconds. What, what insert order? Yeah, so uh, yeah, just state article one will be, you know. Okay, all right. For the, for the warrant being article one, reauthorization of previous borrowing for a feasibility study for the Cutler Elementary School, 237 Adler Street, South Hamilton. Article two, proposition two and a half, debt exclusion for additional funds needed for the feasibility study. Article three, creation of a school's stabilization fund. And article four, clarification of term limits on certain CPC members by amending paragraph two of the community preservation bylaw. All right, Play seconds. All right, and a roll call vote, Peter? Yes. Yep. Diane? Yes. Gary, yes. All right, so uh, that uh, concludes our new business. Uh, uh, any other matters? Otherwise, uh, looking at the schedule, so we're back to uh, Tuesday the 20th for our next meeting. And that I believe includes, uh, Steve, a presentation by uh, Jim Reynolds on a dementia friendly community. Uh, yes, he, right. he was gonna do it tonight, but he asked if we could push it All right. to the following meeting. So we'll get that on the 20th. And uh, the 20th, uh, any other agenda items as we have our new uh, policy? So uh, Peter and Diane, if you want anything added to the 20th, uh, send those in to uh, Steve and we'll uh, get those uh, up on the agenda. Otherwise, so Diane, October 4th, we want to move that to October 5th. I don't Wednesday. think you want to go to the 5th either because it starts on Tuesday night and it's the day, Wednesday is the day of Yom Kippur. So I, let me, Monday, can we meet on a Monday? Can do um, that work for you, Peter? Monday, sure. what, the third? Yeah. Yep. That good with the, uh, Steve? Works for me. All right. So let's uh, schedule the next uh, meeting, the first one in October for the third. And I think the uh, second meeting in October falls on the uh, 18th. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? I believe so. All right. Very well. In the meantime, we got uh, a special town meeting to go through, and I see uh, Roger is uh, still on. So, any uh, comment or question uh, on town meeting from Roger? Uh, the only uh, thing I would do is offer as a reminder, both to uh, this board and the FinCom, I'm not sure if Jim is still on, if you are going to need a uh, board meeting. Uh, prior to the town meeting at, you know, on the day at the site that you, you know, put that on your calendar and get it um, posted. Mm -hmm. Because while town meeting is not an open meeting, 
any board meetings prior to still are. All right. So uh, Steve, if you could remind Jim of that, if he's not on still, that traditionally we do have the posted meeting in case something last minute comes up just prior to the uh, opening of the uh, town meeting itself, maybe 30 minutes prior. I can do that. All right. So, and uh, I think Roger and uh, Steve, uh, if you want to comment that uh, the uh, we had the meeting today with town council and uh, I think everything is moving forward okay for the special town meeting. That's correct. We're uh, all systems go at the moment. Right. Mm -hmm. And as you said, the most important thing is everybody on tonight, call your fellow citizens because we need to ha have a quorum turn on this. That's, that's right, Gary. And, and the quorum in Wenham is 120 for special just as it is for an annual. So um, let's all uh, get out and be at Buker School at one o'clock on the first. Sounds good. All right. Anything remaining, Steve? Uh, nope. I have nothing remaining. All right. So uh, thank you, Catherine. Uh, I know you're going to have long minutes to do out of this tonight. And it's uh, been a long time. Thank you to the audience and to fellow board members. Long meeting, but uh, we uh, certainly some things by surprise. We got a lot to work to do suddenly in the town. So a motion, uh, Peter. I just want to say again um, that Barb Locke is in our hopes and mm -hmm. prayers, and Steve, or Pete, and Ollie, and Daisy. It's just, just tragic yes um okay so with nothing further to discuss i move that we adjourn the september 7th um select board meeting at 8 54 wow second all in favor peter yep diane yes gary yes thank you everybody and we'll uh, see you on uh 20 september and remember all those events in between here that uh, hopefully uh, citizens will show up for. Good night. Good, Good night. night. Thank you. Did I not leave?